We're in the middle of a revolution. They're devouring our country. They're destroying our electoral process. They're destroying our judiciary. They're destroying due process rights. They're at war with the Bill of Rights. They want power. That's what they want. They want to monopolize our government, monopolize our politics, monopolize our system. They don't want a two-party system. They don't want a party system at all. Robert Reich, as you know, is a radical leftist who hates the capitalist system, who hates the constitutional system. You know, all these Marxists pretend that they love it. They hate it. He is a hardcore partisan for the Democrat Party. He was Labor Secretary under Bill Clinton. But you'll notice every single Marxist is a Democrat or something like a Democrat, a Democrat socialist or socialist Democrat. But they always work within the Democrat Party. Uh, Reich is one of them, Bernie Sanders is another, AOC and the mob, uh, that whole group. They work within the Democrat Party because the Democrat Party is perfectly comfortable with them. And that's the institution through which they operate, just like communist parties and communist regimes and fascist parties and fascist regimes. Our totalitarian party in this country is the Democrat Party. It's that simple. And in my new book, The Democrat Party Hates America, let me read you one paragraph because I even mentioned him. Robert Reich, President Bill Clinton's radical Secretary of Labor and currently a professor at UC Berkeley, credits Joe Biden with revitalizing what he calls democratic capitalism. When they use these hyphenated things like democratic capitalism, what they're trying to do is, is, is put a favorable and persuasive patina on top of economic socialism and cultural Marxism. And people go, oh yeah, democratic capitalism, that sounds great. Well, what does that mean? What does it mean? Democratic, that the government controls the economy. When they mean democratic, they don't mean democracy per se. They don't mean the people's will. Because you don't need a hyphenated word to capitalism democratic capitalism. Capitalism is about you making your own decisions. It's about individualism. It's about freedom and opportunity and all the rest of that stuff. So what does democratic socialism mean? I don't know. Maybe it means something like uh, North Korea calls itself some kind of democratic regime. And, and George Orwell talks about this. The word democracy means nothing. Because communists use it, fascists use it, everybody uses it. So it has whatever meaning they want to apply to it. So let me go on here. He credits Joe Biden with revitalizing what he calls democratic capitalism. Of course, democratic capitalism is just another phrase for what Bernie Sanders calls democratic socialism. With a few twists and turns. Reich's point is that Biden has jettisoned market capitalism for Franklin Roosevelt's government-directed socialism. In this, he is correct. Now, I've talked about this at some length, and we're going to talk about it a hell of a lot more because there's a hell of a lot more to say about it. But what's going on right now is the destruction of the capitalist system, the destruction of the culture, together the destruction of society, the destruction of our governing processes that were on the Constitution, and, of course, the destruction of the justice system by taking law and creating disorder, whether it's in the streets of our major cities, whether it's on the border, or whether it is going after a political opponent who you seek to put in prison, prison for a thousand years. So Robert Reich says five facts about Trump's indictments. So I said, well, this is curious. Let's take a listen at this. I haven't heard it yet. Let's take a look. Go. Trump's defenders are still lying about his indictments. Here are five crucial facts you can share with whoever in your life needs to hear them. President Biden did not indict Trump. Four different grand juries made up of ordinary citizens indicted Trump. Right, let's slow down. He really must have stupid students at the University of Berkeley, or he's a moron himself. Nobody said Joe Biden indicted them. Joe Biden can't walk. He doesn't know how to put one foot in front of the other. It's like these mob bosses in the past who were so old they couldn't shuffle around. They, they would sit at restaurants while their, while their lieutenants would carry out their deeds. 
So no, Biden didn't go into a courtroom in front of a grand jury, but like Gigante, you know, you get old, you sit on the beach, maybe in you know, one of those fold-up beach chairs, or you sit in a restaurant while you're eating your spaghetti. In the crime family, the mobsters do what they do. My theory is this, by the way, as a footnote, that there's some kind of equivalent of a Politburo going on within this administration. Joe Biden can give general comments, general orders. He gets tired. He has to go on vacation. He, get, he starts work around 9.30. He stops around 5.30. You can't possibly be an effective president that way. And yet he has effectively instituted the Marxist agenda like nobody before him. My theory is this. There's some kind of group, or I would call them Politburo, of these Bernie Sanders types and these Obama types in every agency and certainly in the White House who get together and make these decisions and then go in and get him to sign off on them. In other words, there is a little cabal, there is a little, little group, a little phony brain trust that's in there writing the executive orders, writing the speeches, um, making decisions, the difference between equity and equality. We're making decisions about the border and all the rest of it, and we have no idea who they are. We can guess, but they're working under the radar. And I think what history will point out is that that's who's running the country, because this guy is incapable on his own of doing the day-to-day -day tasks of a president, which, which are enormous tasks. Uh, so they get him to sign off. He might have general views of what he wants to do. Uh, I'm not saying he's totally out of it. I'm not part of the group that says, oh, you no, I think he's into it enough where he knows what direction he wants to take the country, that he wants to take it radical left, that he became president thanks to Bernie Sanders, thanks to the hard left. He became vice president thanks to Obama, and he's thrown in with them. If Biden's anything, he's a chameleon. He'll do whatever he has to do. And he'll do it with gusto. That is, his, his, not, not his physical or mental gusto, but his propaganda about MAGA, about white supremacy, just as he did when he entered the Senate about blacks and his opposition to integration. In other words, he's a demagogue. And even if he's at 80 percent or 50 percent, he is a big time demagogue. So that is my theory. Anyway, go ahead. Being presented with evidence they found compelling enough to warrant criminal prosecution. The no, that's not how it works. You have a grand jury in these Democrat cities. The grand juries are made up of Democrats. Uh, you don't need a unanimous vote. You don't need really any standard, any high standard to indict somebody. You need a basic standard. Uh, the prosecution controls every piece of information the grand jury hears. There is no defense. The witnesses go in there. There's no defense counsel. There's no exculpatory information. There's nothing. The founders set this up originally to protect so-called defendants or would-be defendants. So a jury, before you have a jury of your peers at a trial, you have a grand jury that's a check on the government. Back then, a check on the monarchy, and then we have the United States, a check on the government so that people don't go nuts. So there's some check. Your fellow citizens are the check. It's not the way it works anymore. Prosecutors put these people, they're cloistered into a room. Uh, they present them with one-sided information over and over and over again. It's a really Stalinist aspect of our system now. Um, it's illegal, but prosecutors are leaking that information to affect the eventual trial jury that comes later. They leak it to a Democrat party state press who regurgitates what's in there, even though it's a violation of what we call 6E. But that's how it works. So when he says they presented the information, tell me, if we were talking about Joe Biden as a candidate, and we were presenting information in grand juries in Kansas, or Idaho, or Utah, or pick your Republican state, pick your Republican area, and say, no, 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 no. Trump isn't directing anything. He's not indicting. He's not, he's not really involved in this. It's a grand jury making these decisions. And imagine if it's a Republican prosecutor with a Trump-appointed judge 
Republican grand jury where Joe Biden got 5% of the vote. There's not a place in this country where Joe Biden got 5% of the vote. Yet there are places in this country where Trump got 5% of the vote. And you're taking, you have these grand juries in these cities, and he just says, oh, what's the problem? Because these people are a fraud. And one of the things I'm trying to get across on Fox, and I hope I can get across here to hosts and on talk radio, is this. Yes, it's important to explain the weeds. It's important to explain the process. But when you use the word why, please understand what you're doing. Why is it that we have two systems of justice, they say? Why is it that Hillary Clinton got away with this? Why is it that? That's fine. That's one shoe that drops. What's the other shoe? Well, what's the answer? Two systems of justice. That's not the answer. The answer is bigger than that. We're in the middle of a revolution. They're devouring our country. They're destroying our electoral process. They're destroying our judiciary. They're destroying due process rights. They're at war with the Bill of Rights. They want power. That's what they want. They want to monopolize our government, monopolize our politics, monopolize our system. They don't want a two-party system. They don't want a party system at all. It's top down. This is what Marxists do in one form or another. Now, that's what's going on. So why? That's why. Want to see more Mark Levin? Go to levintv.com and subscribe now.